Hello and welcome to yet another amazing episode of the Great Debaters Contest. This is season 9, Kiambu Region. I am your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperancia Kapanga. And today we have a battle between two formidable feminine forces. In the proposition, we have Alliance Girls High School. And in the opposition, we have the mighty ladies from Limuru Girls High School. And the motion on the table is, over dependence on cash crops limits food security in Africa. <laughs> Proposal number one, you have three minutes. The late former UN Secretary General, Kofi Annan, believed that Africa can close the productivity gap in the agricultural value chain. He said, and I quote, Africa's smallholder farmers, in essence, small-scale farmers, small-scale farmers, otherwise referred to as farmers for subsistence production, are more than capable of feeding the whole continent, provided, provided they have they, use, they make the use of the latest agronomic practices in combination with appropriate seeds and fertilizers to boost their crop yields. We can do it. From the Alliance Girls High School, winner minor on stage, strongly proposing the motion before this house that states, of our dependence on cash crop limits food security in Africa. Now what is over dependence? Over dependence is the state of needing something, the help or support of something or somebody, too much, too much, excessively, in order to survive or be successful. Cash crops are crops grown for selling rather than for use by the farmer who grows the crops. Limits are essentially restrictions. Food security, according to the United Nations Convention on Trade and Agricultural Development, occurs or exists when all people at all times have physical and economic access to safe, sufficient, and, nutrition, and nutritious food to meet their dietary preferences and to be able to lead an active, healthy life. Now, overdependence on cash crops limits food crops, limits food security in Africa. That's a fact. What essentially does this overdependence do? it actually limits cell sufficiency. A study was done, a research was done, was conducted by a couple of people, some of them being Julius Maithia and Fred Mwigivane from the University of Nairobi. It was titled, Are Commercial Crops Displacing Food Crops and Compromising Kenya's Food Security? The research was conducted in the Mumias Butere District 10, in the western part of Kenya. And the findings were that out of two hectares which the average farmer owned, only less than 10 squared meters were allocated for subsistence farming. The rest of the land was used for cash crop farming. And, what is, and, what, and essentially there they were growing sugarcane. And these farmers depended entirely on this sugarcane in, in order to sustain themselves. They had to sell the sugarcane to the, manuf to the sugar man manufacturing uh, factories in order to get money to buy food crops. They, they depended entirely on these cash crops and therefore did not, were not able to meet their basic needs. They lacked self-sufficiency. I leave it at that. I rest my case. Again, strongly proposing the motion of a dependence on cash crop limits food security in Africa. Thank you. Pastor Kuzo, you have three minutes to make a statement. A hungry man is an angry man. Therefore, I cannot be disputed when I say that a hungry continent is an, a hungry continent. My name is Fatuma Ali from Limuru Girls School, here to strongly oppose the motion that overdependence on cash crops limits food security in Africa. Overdependence is relying on something too much to an excessive extent. Cash crops, these are crops that are grown by, these are crops that are grown for selling rather than for use by the person who grows them. We may ask what food security is. Food security is Food security exists when the people have physical and economic access to safe, nutritious, and su sufficient food. Cash crop farming is a major source of revenue for African countries. By selling their surplus goods, 
African countries are able to, are able to improve the access to food and they can also redirect the economy, they can also income, they can also, the income can also be redirected to produce income generating activities, to fund income generating activities, sorry. A researcher, L. Lei Wagening, shows how farmers choose to cultivate cash crops. The research shows that farmers choose to cultivate cash crops. A study argues that cash crops play a key role in the transition towards sustainable intensification of agriculture. In fact, when the country invests so much food in food when the country invests so much in food technology and research institutes to increase the yields and produce good quality goods, they come up with advanced methods like microbiology and irrigation schemes to provide food for the population. Because there's a growing population, why? They have, they need, they search for carbon energy sources and also because of the burgeoning global middle class in, in Africa today. When we depend too much on cash crops, income from the cash crops, or invest too much on cash crops, ignoring the others like food crops, we, identif we don't identif identify other sources of income generation, thus we do not get access to food. That is why I strongly believe that over-dependence on cash crops limits food security in Africa. Thank you. Second proposal, you have three minutes for cross-examination. My name is Lulu Sorabit from Alliance Girls High School, and I would like to start by informing, um, by saying that we are not against cash crop farming. We are just saying that we neglect the fact that it isn't an assurance of food security because we cannot go eat coffee berries from the farm, neither can we go chew tea leaves from our farms, um, but we need um, to eat actual food. We cannot eat um, or consume cash crops directly from the farm. They need to go get um, processed in the factory. And with that, um, I would like to state that Price depends on demand. And over here, our demand is the countries that we export these cash crops to. Therefore, if the countries that we export the cash crops to discover other alternatives, for example, um, when Kenya used to be the leading producer of pyrethrum in the world, but they discovered synthetic insecticides, which led to a decline in the growth of pyrethrum. Again, Capitalism is all about reducing the cost of production. For example, in Nyandarwa, everybody, a while back, everybody used to grow pyrethrum. Um, but with the lowering, in the spirit of capitalism and with lowering the cost of production, the pyrethrum farmers were paid very little and they had to approach their pyrethrum and grow other crops. But Cash, uh, sorry, food crops will always be eaten. People always eat food. Therefore, food crops will never lack a market. And that is compromising SDG number one, no poverty. If we rely too much on cash crops, we will lose ourselves because they will reach a point where another alternative is to be made. If somebody is, few, if somebody is using something to gain from it, they will always have to look for a better alternative, a cheaper alternative, an alternative that works. Therefore, cash crops aren't here with us to last. They aren't here with us forever. And then again, taking the example of Burkina Faso. In Burkina Faso, 85% of the population um, grow cash crops and they depend on it for their livelihood. But two million, two million citizens of Burkina Faso go hungry. Why? Their land is um, arable, it is fertile, there is adequate rainfall. The money from cash crops isn't enough. The market prices fluctuate because they are regulated by the people who import them. Because if you only have one buyer, you have no other option but to submit to them. For example, we can also use another example with Kenya, our beloved country. Money from cash crops is used to import food. Um, we all know that we are the leading producers of tea in the world. We make one of the finest tea, which is used to blend other teas. But we had to import maize from Brazil. 
we had to import maize from Brazil, which means that the money that we're earning doesn't really do much, isn't really used much. So with this, I conclude and say that over cash crops are a really good thing, but depending on them too much will is like trading our lives for money. Thank you. Second Apuzo, you have three minutes for cross-examination. My name is Antoinette Njeri from Nimuru Girls School, and I will be opposing the motion of a dependence on cash crops limits food security. Our dear opponents have talked about arable land. 60% of the global total of arable land is in Africa. That is a total of 6 million hectares of uncultivated land some of which is very fertile, by the way. Why not utilize the land that has not been put into use? My opponent has also said that we need, to produce cash we need to produce food crops, but we cannot produce each and every food crop that we require to eat. For our, my lovely opponent, opponent has also given the example of maize that we imported it from Mexico and Brazil. This is because our farmers in Kenya who grew maize, well, their maize wasn't bought and it led to it rotting, thus leading to a deficiency. In addition to all this, we must also look at climate as a determining factor to food insecurity. We cannot just say that it is over-dependence on cash crop farming that has led us to food insecurity. We must also Take for example, in Africa, we, d we have seasons, not clearly defined in some countries as summer, winter, fall, but dry spells, rainy seasons. We cannot say that, this, that over dependence on these cash crops is the only reason why we have food insecurity. We cannot control the climate, or can we? Moving on swiftly. In the case of um, Kenya, we have some cash crops which double as food crops. For example, avocados, pineapples, to name a few. Can we not say that it's, we are, and we are also exporting them, can we not say that it is not cash crops, the over-dependence, but just mismanagement of funds and embezzlement? In the case of Mumias, a sugar company in Kenya, there was embezzlement of funds leading to bankruptcy of the company. Is that really about over-dependence? Did cash crops really contribute to this in food insecurity? Thank you. The proposers have been asked if over-dependence on cash crops leads to food insecurity in Africa, then what solutions do they have to solve this problem of food insecurity and tackle the over-dependence on cash crops? The opposers, on the other hand, have been asked of what good is cash crop farming if it is at the expense of our own food security? <laughs> Proposal number three, you have three minutes to respond. Uh, my name is Sharon Wanju from the Alliance Girls High School. In response to the audience's question on how we can counter or how, how we can control over dependence on food crops or what's the alternative? The alternative is sustainable intensification. Sustainable intensification is where we are merging both food crop farming and cash crop farming them, merging, bringing them together to, depend, to have a self-sustaining system. Food security is all about sustainability of a country, a country being able to sustain itself without requiring help. And also, each country, in essence, has had a food that is has had a staple food. Case example, Kenya. Most Kenyans, our staple food is actually maize, but we have ugali from it. But it's very different to go to West Africa. West Africa don't need maize as much as we do. It's different. So we're not saying that cash crop farming won't help us. We're just saying that it should be to a level that we are checking food security. In that, we're making sure that we can sustain ourselves as we sell our crops to get money. My dear opposer talked about embezzlement of cash crops. I think there's, no, there's little or no accounted 
embezzlement in the case of food crops. Because in essence, food crops, the farmer plants, sticks to the market, sells. Cash crops, their main intermediaries will, will lose money. We don't have enough income at the end of the day. But the main point of self-sufficiency, the main point of growth is self-sufficiency. That's my main point. Cash crop farming increases vulnerability to food security as prices increase because of diminishing capacity of food. When we grow these cash crops too much, whereby we're using all our arable land, all our available land to plant cash crops, there's not enough land for us to plant food crops because the, the population grows, demand grows, but if, and land does not grow. Land does not increase. We have a limited amount of land in our country. There's not enough land, as per se, to compromise and say that we need to put cash crop farming as head and not food crop farming. As said, we cannot be selling crops to other countries if we ourselves don't have enough to eat. In necessity, any country needs first to cater for its citizen before it caters for its own economical growth. Vulnerability depicts the loss of access of necessary resources needed for production and consumption of adequate food production. So at the end of the day, we can't sell when we don't have enough for ourselves. As my teammate said, we cannot eat our cash crops. We do not consume our cash crops, but we do consume our food crops. So at the end of the day, I strongly, effortlessly, and tirelessly propose that over-dependence on cash crops is a limit to food security. Thank you. Kadipuza, you have three minutes to respond. Thank you for this opportunity. I am Joy Mbao from the Limuru Girls School, here to strongly, strongly oppose the notion of a dependence on cash crops limits food security in Africa. I will start by correcting my worthy opponent when she said that uh, we are not using the land that we have to produce enough food crops. Statistically speaking, over 600 million hectares of land is uncultivated in Africa. That is about 60% of, of the global total. Instead of blaming this on cash crops, why don't we come up with, uh, with strategies on how to invest and how to obtain food from this uncultivated land? To answer the question uh, from the Alliance Girls, she asked how would cash, cash crops help if we do not have food sustainers? Number one, cash crops are a source of livelihood. Fact, nearly two out of three Africans depend on agriculture for their source of livelihood. In Kenya and Ethiopia, agriculture is the key to reducing poverty. Agricultural growth has shown to reduce poverty twice as much as any other sector. This can be achieved by using the exports, by using the money from the exports to finance income generating projects and uh, you know, get income to obtain food either from other countries or to begin projects in our own country on how to produce food of our own. The government should uh, invest in income generating projects. You see, when we increase the talk, when we, um, when we produce cash crops, we are preparing them for international standards. Therefore, we employ a lot of technology, research is done, and this very research, this very technology can be adopted by the subsistence sector so that we can be able to produce more food for our own and for exportation. Uh, a majority of African countries are still depending on rain to, you know, to facilitate uh, growing of crops. We should, uh, we should employ irrigation schemes, like for example in Moya for rice, and uh, more of those should be used in areas such as Turkana, where there is not much of water, but there is the Lake Turkana that can be used to, you know, irrigate those plants and uh, eventually produce food for the locals and surplus can be used in other countries. Thank you. Proposers, you have one minute to make a final statement. I'm Lulu Sorobit from Alliance Girls High School, and once again, I would like to emphasize that over-dependence on cash crop 
is limiting, will always limit and shall always limit food security in Africa as long as something different is done. And as a proposition, we propose sustainable intensification, which is a practical approach to merging subsistence um, crop farming and cash crop farming, whereby they are both we, you, a farmer on one piece of land shall plant cash crops and um, food crops. For example, in Ghana, where cocoa, um, plantains, and fruit, uh, fruit trees, and cocoa trees are planted on the same plot of land. And also in Malawi. So with, given the case of these countries, this can work. Um, to achieve SDG number eight, decent work and economic growth, SDG number two, zero hunger, and SDG number one, zero, no poverty. And with this, we shall go further as Africa because we have the natural resources to do this in our soil. I rest my case. Opposers, you have one minute to make a final submission. Thank you once again for the opportunity. Let me begin by saying Kenya cannot produce all the food that it, it requires, you know. We need food from other countries, right? We need food from, um, right, we need food from other countries. So what we produce, we give to them, and what they produce, they give to us. Fact, 239 million people in Africa are hungry. And this is 20 million higher than four years ago. We have land, we have funds, why aren't you producing enough food? The food crop sector must have been given a chance, but it's just disappointing us. Let us give cash crops an opportunity to get out there and show the rest of the world the African heritage, agriculture. Thank you. From where we see the judges, were we impressed like super impressed? No. We felt like there could have been some extra level of research, okay, from your end. This motion requires that. It requires that you get to know your finger, your facts on your fingertips, all right? So as a result, we were fairly excited, okay? So we would have hoped for a better way of just dealing with it. Nonetheless, we want to encourage you because you're all confident speakers. You came to the stage and you did very well. That's a plus on your end. But I must also comment on something, delivery. And this comes to all of you, that how you deliver your comments as well matters. Remember, debate is an art of persuasion. You need to persuade us. You're sitting here and you've seen other people almost falling down to the stage because they need you to get a point. What about you? But we appreciate what you have done. There can be room for improvement, all right? All the best to both of you. Down to the numbers. Alliance Girls High School. The judges, so it fits to award you. 66%, let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Limuru Girls High School, you earned yourself. 64%, let's appreciate them. <laughs> Congratulations to Alliance Girls High School for winning this particular debate. Congratulations to both teams for a job well done. Remember, the debate does not end here. It continues on all our social media platforms with the hashtag GDC for SDGs. I have been your host, Chris Boru. And I am Esperancia Kapanga. See you next time. <laughs>